Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. All about the sport of Schützend or protection. Schützend is a sport that dates back over 120 years and developed to compete with your dog that has been bred to protect you and your property. It was created in Germany as a way to exhibit excellent handling skills in tracking, obedience, and protection. This style of training is intense and is done with very specific breeds that have been conditioned for this type of work and those that excel in high prey drive and high pack drives. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Michelle Forto, and I am the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works. Protection training is offered through Alaska Dog Works with a heavy focus on obedience structure. Years ago at our facility in Denver, Colorado, we were in the development stage of putting together a Schutzen Club for participants to train and hone their skills and to eventually qualify for competitions. But not all roads lead down the same path, and here we are in Alaska. So, Let's get into it, shall we? What is Schützend? Otherwise known as IGP or Utility Dog Trials, Schützend is a dog sport that tests a dog's tracking, obedience, and protection skills and evaluates if a dog has the appropriate traits and characteristics of a good working dog. It was developed in Germany in the early 1900s as a suitability test for German Shepherds, but soon became the model for training and evaluating all five of the German protection breeds, which included Boxer, Doberman, Giant Schnauzer, and Rottweiler. Though any breed of dog can participate, today the sport is dominated by German Shepherds and the closely related Belgian Malinois breed. Dog owners and handlers participate in Schutz and Clubs as a group activity for training the dogs, and clubs sponsor trials to test the dogs and award titles. The best dogs can qualify to participate in national and international level championships. As I mentioned earlier, traits are important and taken seriously in this sport. Schutzen tests dogs for the traits necessary for police type work. Dogs trained in Schutzen are suitable for a wide variety of working tasks, such as police work, specific odor detection, search and rescue, and many others. The purpose of Schutzen is to identify dogs that have or do not have the character traits required for these demanding jobs, such as a strong desire to work, courage, intelligence, trainability, strong bond to the handler, perseverance, protective instinct, and a good sense of smell. Schutzend also tests for physical traits such as strength, endurance, agility, and scenting ability. 
The goal of Schutzend is to eliminate the character and ability of a dog through training. Breeders can use this insight to determine how and whether to use the dog in producing the next generation of working dogs. Remember that puppy program I've spoken about in the past? The German Shepherd was developed from working herding dogs around 1900 as an all-around working dog. Within a few years, it was clear that the dogs were losing their working ability. Schutzend was developed at this time as a test of working ability for German Shepherds. Only German Shepherds that had passed a Schutzen test or a herding test were allowed to breed and thus have their progeny registered as German Shepherd dogs. This is true in Germany to this day. Pretty strict rules on breeding a sound German Shepherd. It is only by testing the working ability of every generation that the strong working characteristics of the GSD have been maintained. Today, any breed can participate in the sport, though some breed clubs run trials for just their single breed members. The intermediate and advanced levels of the sport and the top titles are dominated by German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois, with Dobermans, Rottweilers, and Bouvier de Flanders also quite successful. At the beginning levels, such as BH level, which is companion dog test, and OB, which is obedience, a wide variety of breeds and sizes participate. Personally, I would choose a Belgian Malinois to perform and train with for Schutzen Sport. I find the breed full of energy, eager to please, and constantly in motion, ready to learn and be challenged. Let's talk about the training, shall we? Schutzen training, like the sport itself, has evolved over the years. Schutzen is very much a hands-on sport, though there are theory and techniques about training dogs. Most of the training is done in clubs, among other people and dogs. In a club environment, handlers and their dogs gather to practice techniques with the club equipment and experienced handlers in bite suits called decoys. Decoys have their own training and certification processes, and a good decoy is important in training your dog. A reliable source for training information is a good Schutzen club. The overwhelming majority of Schutzen training is done by owner handlers at local clubs. There are very few clubs in the United States making books and videos a vital source of information in our country. In the United States, most clubs are affiliated with the American Working Dog Federation, the United States Boxer Association, American Working Malinois Association, United Schutzen Clubs of America, as well as a club in Germany that I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of. It goes by the DVG, or German German Shepherd Dog Club of American Working Dog Association. Schutzend clubs tend to be small, 20 or fewer members, because there is a limit to the number of dogs that can be trained in one session. Clubs often provide only limited formal assistance with tracking and obedience. To a certain extent, the clubs exist to provide the specialized resources needed to train the protection phase. However, a legitimate club will not permit a member to train only protection. Usually, the more experienced members are willing to help the novice with tracking and obedience, though this is typically somewhat informal in the United States. Tracking and obedience is something that we do here at Alaska Dog Works to prepare dogs not only for Schutz and Ring and French Ring competitions, but also prior to joining our protection program, we will focus on obedience. Another function of Schutzen clubs is to identify dogs that should be trained in Schutzen. Schutzen is a challenging test of a dog's character, and not every dog or even every GSD is up to the challenge. Uh, 
the training director of the club has a responsibility to the dog, handler, club, and society to constantly evaluate every dog and to decline to train any dog with questionable character or working ability. Training a dog that does not really want to work is stressful and frustrating for all parties involved. Schutzen clubs regularly hold public trials, providing the opportunity for dogs to earn titles and for handlers to assess their training progress. A tiny number of dedicated handlers have trained their dogs to title readiness strictly from books and videos. This is unlikely to succeed in most cases because it is almost impossible to train the protection phase without a helper. A good club should be considered a necessity for Schutzen training. I'm going to take a quick break here, you guys, and I'd like you to learn all about First Paw Coffee. So earlier you learned about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Tail Wagger Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Tail Wagger Blend is their first offering, and its name and label were crowdsourced from their Facebook fans. How cool is that? The Tail Wagger Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. It is a medium roast from Colombian beans with tastes of Brazil nuts, grapefruit, and oak. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. Hey guys, before the break, we talked about Schutzen. And if you're interested in learning more or even considering taking a class, let us know. You can find information about our classes on our website, alaskadogworks.com. Any training program should start at puppyhood, foundational obedience with an emphasis on utility sport. Schutzen training includes teaching the pup to locate items, place various materials in its mouth early on, and do not inhibit the bite instinct. Practice on off commands early and often. Encourage barking and growling with your off commands as well. Intermediate training should include confidence building exercises using elevated platforms, reactivity to objects and people, etc. at a varying distances. Continuation of foundational obedience with a canine good citizen emphasis at this stage to properly teach the dog friend and foe. Advanced training should include the emphasis of on and off, recall, off lead exercises, introduction to seek, bark and hold exercises, and some bite work. Any protection program should begin at puppyhood and develop over the course of two years and beyond. What I just talked about with our puppyhood program and our intermediate program, as well as our advanced training program, that's something that we do here at Alaska Dog Works to build on foundation throughout a two-year course that we call Level Up. And we do take it very seriously. A dog can be excluded for a number of reasons. And we test the dogs often every semester to make sure that they're progressing appropriately. I'm going to do another little short break. And when I get back, we're going to go and dive deeper into the Belgian Malinois. We're living in uncertain times. If there is one thing we can be thankful for, that is the recent pet adoption boom. Shelters are being cleared out, and that means you may not know much about your new best friend. Alaska Dog Works virtual and on-site classes are the best way for you to build a lasting bond and learn about your pup, new or old. From setting up a proper routine, to learning the commands, and much more, Alaska Dog Works provides you with the resources to develop your dog into one of the best. Right now, Alaska Dog Works has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Go to alaskadogworks.com now and use promo code DOGWORKS and save 20% off your training program at the time of your booking. Visit alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS to save 20% today. That's alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS at the time of booking. 
Okay, guys, let's learn all about the Belgian Malinois. I mentioned earlier in the program that this is probably my favorite breed to do competition sport uh, schützend with. And it, the reason why is going to be described right here and now. Belgian Malinois are squarely built, proud, and alert herders standing 22 to 26 inches high they are strong and well muscled but more elegant than bulky there's an honest no frills look about them as befit dogs built to work hard for their feed a breed hallmark is the proud carriage of the head coat colors range from a rich fawn to mahogany the black ears and mask accentuate bright questioning eyes the color of dark belgian chocolate if you have ever seen a mal perform an obedience routine you know firsthand what a smart and eager breed this is problems set in though when this people-oriented dog is underemployed and neglected exercise and plenty of it preferably side by side with their adored owner is key to mal happiness let's talk about the history shall we the Belgian Malinois first bred around the city of Malines in the northwestern region of Belgium are one of four closely related breeds of Belgian herding dogs. In some countries, the Malinois is classified together with the Tavern and the Lakenois and Belgian Shepherd as a single breed collectively known as the Belgian Sheepdog. In America, the Malinois has been registered as a separate breed since 1959. He bears a passing resemblance to the German Shepherd dog, but has a different head and is leggier and finer boned than his better known German counterpart. Mals have long been acknowledged as a perilous livestock herder in their native land. They were first bred by serious dog people who primarily concerned with producing dogs of sterling working character and who spurned passing fads and fancies of pet owners. The emphasis on performance made the Mal the go-to dog for Belgian sheep herders and cattlemen. It was in 1911 that Mal's were first brought to America. They flourished here until the outbreak of World War II put an end to the import importation of European breeding stock. The breed languished in the post-war years until the early 1960s when the Mal's admirers began the process of replenishing its American population. Mal's are still prized as herders of all kinds of stock, but their versatility and high work drive have opened careers in many other occupations and activities. They are highly sought after as police and military canines. They have served with such distinction that the Fayetteville, North Carolina Memorial to Military Dogs features a life-size bronze of a Belgian Malinois. Here's some quick facts. The temperament is confident, smart, and hardworking. The AKC breed popularity ranks them 43rd of 196. They are 24 to 26 inches high for males and 22 to 24 inches high for females. Weight is between 60 and 80 pounds for males and 40 to 60 pounds for females. They have a life expectancy of 14 to 16 years, and they are classified in the herding group for the AKC. Care and training of your Belgian Malinois should do well on a high-quality dog food, whether commercially manufactured or home-prepared with your veterinarian supervision and approval. Any diet should be appropriate to the dog's age. Some dogs are prone to getting overweight, so watch your dog's calorie consumption and weight level. Treats can be an important aid in training, but giving too many can cause obesity. Learn about which human foods are safe for dogs and which are not. Check with your vet if you have any concerns about your dog's weight or diet. 
Clean, fresh water should be available at all times. Malinois are highly intelligent, athletic, and muscular, and exceedingly devoted. The Malinois need to be actively engaged with his owner, both mentally and physically. This is not a dog who can be left in the backyard, and daily walks are not enough either. Exercise and plenty of it, preferably side by side with his owner, is paramount to their breed's happiness. To deprive a Malinois of activity and human companionship is to deprive him of his very reason for being. Malinois make great running, hiking, and biking companions, and they excel at agility, tracking, herding, obedience, and Schutzend protection competitions. Like most herding breeds, Malinois have a high prey drive and are strongly interested in moving objects. This trait can lead to chasing children, vehicles, or other animals, and show, so should be directed into acceptable activities through training. Early socialization and obedience training are must. If you'd like to learn more about how to train your Belgian Malinois to be one of the best trained dogs, follow us on our social channels. Just search DogWorks Radio. Did you know that DogWorks Radio is much more than a podcast? We are a full service dog training center here in Alaska and we work with dog clients not only up here in the Great White North, but also around the world. As always, check out our website at alaskadogworks.com and please be sure to tell your family and friends about our podcast. The best thing you can do to help us out is just share our show on social media. And if you guys would like to see some fabulous pictures of us with some of our dogs that we've trained over the years, check out our Facebook page. You'll see quite a few Malinois on our Facebook page. See you next time. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.